Day nine, weigh in. I gained weight. Uh, I forgot to, well, I didn't forget to. I re- thought I recorded it and I didn't. <laughs> and I've already eaten and uh, I'm halfway through the day and I just checked the video and there is none. I didn't hit record like an idiot. But I gained weight this morning, which I don't know why because I've been good on the diet, but I gained like three pounds. So now I'm back to thinking, is the scale right? You can't gain three pounds in a day if you don't break your diet, can you? I don't know. I'm sticking with it, though. It's not throwing me off. I'm hoping it's just a blip. I'll try and remember to weigh myself tomorrow, but I was up to like 285 or something. I thought I gained three pounds. Two pounds, that is. I gained. I was up to 285, basically. I have no idea why. Annoying, but we'll keep going. Uh, last night, I went off my diet again. And part of the reason was, there were a few reasons. Part of the reason was that um, I gained weight, as hopefully I recorded properly and you saw before this, but uh, I gained weight overnight, the previous day, and I was perfect on my diet and I have no idea, and I gained like three pounds, I think, something like that, Um, and it just made no sense to me and it was disheartening, and, you know, I just, I think I've got to stop doing that, I've got to stop weighing myself every day, it's just not helpful. You know, because there's going to be minor fluctuations, you know. I'm going to hold more water one day and or I'm going to forget to weigh myself before and I'm going to have a drink of water and that's going to weigh. And all of these little things, these little micro changes are going to end up with potentially me being disheartened. So I've got to stop doing that. So I'm going to weigh myself once a week now. So I'll weigh myself on day, uh, where are we, day 10 now, so day 14. So I'll weigh myself in four days' time. Um, I think that's the best way to handle it. Uh, the other reason I went off my diet, apart from like that little seed of me thinking, um, well, I didn't lose weight, you know, like I was feeling strong, actually. I was feeling strong. But the problem is, as a food addict, it only takes one little crack to appear for you to turn that into a chasm, you know. And the crack yesterday was that uh, Laura asked if she, I would take her to go get a bagel. And we went to the bagel place and... Uh, it wasn't open, so we went to Pavilions because they have a great bakery section, and that's where it happened. So I've got to ask Laura to not say stuff like that to me before. Here's the thing. We do it to each other all the time, so I've got to ask her not to do it, though. And I've got to stop doing it to her, but we've got to stop doing it to each other. Um, if she wants something, she's just got to go out and get it and <laughs> not tell me about it. Uh, so there's that, and there's the weight thing, and I'm going to try and address that and clean that up. But no more weighing myself. Not till the end of the week. All right, Nuggets. Back on the diet. I'm not putting a video up till the end of the week, but I wanted to make a quick check-in because I'm 12 days, 11 days? No, 12 days. I didn't make a video yesterday. 12 days into the diet, and I feel fantastic. I feel really good. Um, I did cheat weigh myself, but I didn't record it because I'm going to do that at the end of the week. But uh, I weighed myself because I felt really light. I was like, I feel strangely light. I... I didn't, my weight wasn't uh, reflective of how light I felt, (laughs) which is the story of my life. But, um, but yeah, I have lost weight. So I'll do a proper check-in on day 14. And then I'll probably do one week videos. You know, that seems to work best for me because I can't, I can't find shit to say every day. You know, what am I, what can I tell you? I'm eating meat. What did I do? I did try ribs. I found that ribs are not good on this diet because my, for me, my love of ribs is barbecue sauce and you can't have barbecue sauce i you know you can try and find something that is carnivorous but it's such a a workaround and the truth is what i really love is sweet baby raised barbecue sauce on meat and so you know i've bought all these ribs and i'm not going to eat them i don't know what i'm going to do i'm just throwing away i guess i hate doing that no you know i'll cook them and i'll just force myself down today i'm going a little bit fast i'm having chicken wings tonight for the monday night football game uh, the LA Rams are playing. I don't like the Rams. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. I don't like the Rams. I don't know. I'm not a big American football fan, but, you know, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. But the Rams just, I don't know. Whose house? Our house. Rams house. I don't know. All that shit annoys me. Um, but I'm going to have chicken wings tonight, and they're going to be from like a wing stop thing, so I don't know what's going to be on them. So it's probably going to be off my diet. So I'm going to fast up until I get it. But this video is just to say I feel really good, surprisingly good.
I think my mind is also adjusting to the fact that when I cook stuff in my skillet, I have burgers with cheese on them and a couple of eggs or something like that. Something like that is about all I have. have. Uh, the occasional bacon, I am still occasionally eating bacon. It's very odd to try and get your head around the idea that all that stuff that's left in the pan when you're done, you're supposed to eat. <laughs> and I don't. I can't. It's too much grease and too much fat. But it's weird to take eggs out. I'm used to, if I fry my eggs in bacon grease before, like cook bacon and then put the eggs, I'd always like pick up the eggs with a spatula and then just kind of sit there and drain it off because I don't want fat on it, you know, and then put it on the plate, you know. Or I obviously not use fat at all and I do them in a, a, a little bit of butter or something um, in a nonstick pan. But now it's not the case. I pick the eggs up, stick them straight on the plate, fat and grease and all. And I'm used. To, I'm getting used to that. I really am getting used to that. I think my favorite meal, although I'm not supposed to think like this, food is fuel, et cetera, et cetera, but I still think my favorite f meal is the uh, Costco chicken wings, a pack of party chicken wings. The pack's about that big. It's got maybe 16, 20 wings in it, little tiny wings, cooked in ghee with a few herbs and spices in them. It's just, I can't top it, man. I don't know if I'm getting enough fat doing that, but they're so good, and I'm not bored of them. I can have them every other night, and I'm, you know, I'm loving them. I'm still enjoying the burgers. Smash burgers are better. I figured it out. I don't like the chain smash burger, by the way. That's shitty burgers. But homemade burgers, just I used to struggle with it so much. Now I just, I roll them into a ball so very quickly. Take them out, take the mint, the the beef out, roll it into a ball, and then put it in the hot pan and just smash it down with a metal spatula, and that's it. Make it like this thin, make it really thin. Cook two minutes, flip it, put cheese on it, two minutes, eat it. It's perfect, absolutely delicious, definitely the best way <laughs> to do burgers. I've been fanny assing about with burgers for years trying to get it right. That's the way you do it. I don't put anything on them either. I put salt on, when I put it in the pan, I put salt on one side, flip it over, salt, cheese. It's so good. I'm going to have it tomorrow. So I'm fasting today for the chicken mix. Anyway, what a load of rambling bollocks. I'm feeling good. Still on the diet. This one might keep. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I'm not looking forward to my weigh-in tomorrow because I went off my diet last night. Uh, Laura got pizza. Um, I walked into the kitchen to get myself a drink and I saw the pizza and ate. Just ate a slice. I don't know what I was doing. I just picked up a slice and ate it. And then two hours later, I went out and got... Snickers bar and a bag of Cheetos, which I don't even like Cheetos. Anyway, so I'm not looking forward to tomorrow's. I've been really good as well. <laughs> that's like there's nothing else has happened since you've watched. That's it. Um, <clears throat> since you've watched in this video. But that's anyway, so I'm not looking forward to the way in. But something interesting happened last night. Uh, I had an insanely intense dream. And I don't know if it's to do with the fact that I ate crap, sugar, right? I had sugar and uh, gluten because I had um, the pizza, a slice of pizza. I only had one slice. That, I don't know. I had one slice of pizza and I had sugar and I had whatever's in Cheetos and chemicals for dinner. And um, I had this crazy intense dream, the like of which I've never had before. You know, I like everyone, I forget my dreams, but this was so intense that I, when I woke up at like six o'clock this morning, I turned around in bed to cuddle my dog, who always sleeps at our feet under the blanket, um, so that I would stay awake and try and commit the dream to memory. Because normally I just go back to sleep and then the dream's gone, you know. Um, <clears throat> I got to shave. Um, so the dream was... Basically, that um, this is my wife. Sorry, the dream was basically that uh, my godfather Francis, who died, I guess about eight or nine years ago now, seven or eight years ago, um, I was with him in a pub in England, and it was a fairly empty pub, and I knew something was wrong because I knew he shouldn't be there, but I didn't know how to express to him like, you know, you shouldn't, you're dead. I didn't know how to say that to him. So uh, I was having a drink, and it was very intimate and close, and I loved him dearly. He had a huge influence on my life. Most of what I am, my sense of humor is from him. So um, Francis, his name was. And um, 
I had this intense dream with her. I'm drinking with him in the pub. And then I, I know something's off, but I can't tell him. And he says, well, let's go back to the house. So we go back to his house. We're in Littlehampton. I've never lived in Littlehampton. I do like Littlehampton, though. There's always been a part of me that wants to live there. Um, it's not a particularly stunning place. It's not like everyone would go, oh, yeah, Littlehampton, the jewel of southern England. But I liked it, Littlehampton. I don't know. There's something about it that I really liked. Um so we go back to the house, but it's not our house. It's just this empty house in Little Hampton, which he said, yeah, there's no one there right now because the so-and-so, someone was using it and now they're not. And I can't remember that part of the dream, but there was a reason why it was empty. So we get into the house and now suddenly my mother's there who died earlier this year. And I forgot to say that Francis, my godfather, was as he was 30 years ago not as he was 10 years ago or so when he died, Uh, because he died of cancer and he looked terrible, obviously. But he was as, he's kind of like the image I have in my head, that was him. My mother was suddenly there at the house and Francis just kind of disappeared out of the dream. And my mother was also 30 years ago. It was the kind of image of when she was about my age. And um, I'm so happy to see her and I cuddle her and I hug her and... She starts dancing and we're laughing and joyous. And I suddenly get this realization on this. I run, not sudden. I creepingly get this realization. Bad writing there to you suddenly. I creepingly get this um, realization that I'm in a dream and that this can't be real. And I try to express to my mother, this can't be real. And eventually I say to her, because, you know, you're, you're gone. You're, you're dead. She doesn't acknowledge that I'm talking to her about this. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. She doesn't acknowledge what I'm saying. She's just like, don't worry, let's dance, let's play, let's talk, and it's beautiful. And I'm in this weird quandary of knowing I'm in a dream and not wanting to wake up because I'm loving being with my mother. It's like it's healing me, right? It's healing. But also knowing that I have to wake up at some point and I want to be the one in control of that. I don't want it to suddenly end. So now I'm trying to wake myself up and I have no idea how to wake myself up from this dream because it doesn't feel like a dream. I think it's, I know that it's not reality. So I'm not sure how to alert myself to, 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 to bring myself out of that reality, which is dancing and, and laughing with my mother, and put me into the reality of whatever it is that's outside. I don't know what's outside. I'm not thinking of America or marriage or house or home or jobs or anything. But I know that there is a real world, which is not this one, because in the real world, my mother is dead, right? But I don't want to wake up. And yet I try to wake up and then I realize I don't know how to wake up. And the thought crosses my dream mind of pinch yourself, right? And I'm suddenly aware of how fucking useless that whole thing is and how ridiculous it is. Because in the dream, I'm dancing. I couldn't be more physically engaged with the reality in my subconscious reality that suddenly pinching would tip me over the edge. I'm dancing. I'm jumping on beds. I'm bouncing off the walls. I'm drinking beer, a pint of beer in an English pub. Like I am very mentally and physically present in this dream reality. Pinching would do nothing. So as I start to realize I don't know how to wake up from this, I start to feel a little bit trapped, right? And my mother senses that I'm starting to stress out. So she takes me to a different room and suddenly... My mother's gone, right? And the dream starts to get a little bit darker, like Little Hampton is now grey and overcast, which if you're from Little Hampton, you might say, yeah, that's Little Hampton. But it's kind of grey and overcast. It's kind of empty. I don't know why, because I'm in a house, but I just kind of know out there it's grey. The whole house is grey and dark as well. And I climb onto a bed, and lying in the bed is my 18-year-old sister, not my real half-sister, Rachel, Just this random person that I see as my sister. I don't know why. I just kind of know that it's my sister. So I'm starting to feel a little bit freaked out. I don't know what she looked like, this girl, but she was about 18 years old. And she's lying on bed in a white, like, cut-off T-shirt and white panties, right? And so I lie on her belly. And I'm just kind of, I'm not really whimpering, but I'm feeling a little bit, you know, stressed out. And her belly's warm, so I feel like I'm still in the woobie. You know, I'm still kind of warm and 
and and connected to someone. And then this man walks in who is my father. Now, I don't know who my father is. It wasn't my stepfather. Who, But in the dream, I know it's my father. I can't remember what they look like, but it certainly wasn't anything that I recognize, right? And as they're coming in, I know it's my father and I start to tense up, right? And I'm like, I don't know what to say to that person because I don't know who they are. But of course, I believe that this person I'm lying on is my sister. So the father comes in and starts stroking her leg and starts creeping up her leg towards her panties. And I push his hand away and say, you can't do that. You can't do that. Stop. What are you doing? And he starts laughing and he starts again. And now I'm stressing out. I'm like, get away. What are you doing? Get away from her. And that's when I wake up. Fucking intense, man. <laughs> anyway, carnivore diet. <laughs> I mean, look, I went off my diet, so I don't think this has anything to do. I didn't have cheese. I mean, I had Cheetos, but I didn't have cheese. And they do say that cheese causes um, crazy uh, stuff. What did I have yesterday? All I had was ribs. I had bacon and eggs in the morning. Did I have cheese on that? No, bacon and eggs in the morning. And then I had some reheated ribs. And then I ate that shit that I just told you about. And that was it. Very intense. All right. Well, look, it's way day tomorrow. So uh, I'm not looking forward to that. Here's the thing. Even if I haven't lost weight or if I've gained it back, I've gone up and down. And even if the end result is I've lost no weight or I've lost a pound, I do feel lighter. And believe it or not, my clothes actually feel bigger. I don't know how that works, but... <clears throat> I feel better. Anyway, weigh in tomorrow.